So you might recall an AI project we covered a while back in August of 2024 called the AI Scientist, where the company Sakana.ai built a AI system that would hopefully at some point be fully automated to do open-ended scientific discovery, where AI would contribute new findings to science. The idea was to take LLMs, create some sort of a scaffolding around it, give it some tools, and to have it perform research independently. Well, fast forward to today, and the AI scientist generates its first peer-reviewed scientific publication. This, as far as we know, is the first paper of this kind. This can be seen as an example of AI contributing fully autonomously, right, on its own, doing all the work and all the experiments, and contributing new knowledge to science. Now, you've seen this image on this channel before, but just so everybody's on the same page, there's this idea of an intelligence explosion, a point sometime in the future. In this case, this is Leopold Aschenbrenner, an ex-OpenAI AI safety researcher. You know, he's saying it might happen 2027 or sometime in that time period. And this prediction is not that far off from some of the other people like Dario Amade that are talking about when AI is going to reach this level. But the basic idea is this. We, of course, know that AI is beginning to automate certain tasks. Some tasks it's beginning to do better than humans can. Some things it's still worse at, some things it's much, much better at. But the point is, what if it gets better than humans at one particular thing? And that thing is AI research. As in, when will the AI, the systems, when will they become better at improving themselves than humans were able to? This likely would trigger a kind of sharp upward inflection of the rate of progress in AI's abilities. And of course, this would likely cascade to pretty much everything else, all other areas of scientific progress and pretty much anything else. And of course, this is the time that a lot of people are very excited about. It could lead a new golden era of scientific progress, but also but maybe a little bit scary because we're not quite sure what that looks like. Also, the idea of AI doing stuff that we don't fully understand to progress its own abilities forward is a little bit daunting. But as you see here with this AI scientist, by the way, this is kind of a version of 2.0, right? This is not the original AI scientist, which, by the way, is an open source project. So you can download it and you can um, add to this project. You can have it uh, do research on your behalf, etc. It's on GitHub. This is its sort of a bigger brother, the next updated version, which sounds like it's also going to get open source sometime in the future. So a lot of these technologies will be available to everyone. So here's the paper that was written by this AI scientist. As you can see here, they're saying it's anonymous authors. Now, the reason for this is because the actual peer review process was in itself a sort of uh, AI experiment, if you will. So there are several very distinguished, very important sort of machine learning conferences. This one is one of them, the ICLR. And they have a workshop where you're able to submit papers to be peer reviewed by people according to some guidelines to make sure that they're high quality works, that the science is done right, that everything is sort of notated correctly. That's a, it's a high quality paper that sort of contributes to science without errors, etc. And this year it had one little extra clause that was added and it's this that these reviewers were going to potentially see some AI generated papers thrown in with the mix of other sort of quote unquote real papers written by real human authors. Now as a small fraction of total papers, so the reviewers were notified that it's possible, although unlikely, that they may be assigned an AI generated paper to the review. It was a double blind study, so nobody knew which paper was which, nobody knew which paper was human, which paper was AI generated. And since it was unlikely that any single individual would review that paper, I mean, you basically had to assume that you're grading a human paper. You would treat it just like any other paper that you would review. Now, while the paper was better, higher quality, according to these reviewers, than a lot of the human submitted ones, so it was a better, higher quality paper than sort of the average accepted papers by human authors. However, it wasn't perfect. There was a number of things here that the reviewers, as well as the people behind this project, they sort of went through and they noticed some inconsistency. For example, the AI scientist said that uh, referred to nesting. The comment here is this experiment did not contain a nesting structure. There was a one error in this thing that was uh, kind of bizarre. And I'm not exactly sure what to make of it. It's kind of weird. 
so there's this person in the AI community. His name is Jürgen Schmidhuber, very well-known person. And he had a lot of ideas back in the days about how to kind of move the AI field forward, the machine learning field forward. And he believes, he claims that a lot of the sort of progress today should be credited to him. So for example, when a prize went to Dr. Hinton, who is referred to as the godfather of AI, right? So Jürgen writes, stop crediting the wrong people for inventions made by others. So here he's got a little uh, picture that's kind of throwing shade at, let's say kind of critiquing. This is Jan LeCun, Joshua Bengio, and this is Dr. Hinton. And this is Jeffrey Hinton kind of like a copying off of him. So he sort of talks about this a lot to the point where it's almost kind of like a meme in the AI research community. Back around the time when the QSTAR leak occurred from OpenAI, there's uh, somebody that was claiming we invented QSTAR first, and he presents kind of a paper uh, showing that they invented it first. You know, Elon Musk chimes in going, Schmidt Huber invented everything. So you kind of get it, right? So Schmidt Huber has a lot of papers back in the days describing some of these concepts that are being kind of developed into technologies now. And he's saying that, hey, no one's crediting him for his discoveries. What does that have to do with our AI scientist paper? Well, if you scroll down, this kind of jumps out at you. So when this paper is describing the model architecture that this AI scientist was using, it wrote, we use an LSTM-based neural network which it attributes to Goodfellow et al, right? A paper published in 2016, which is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to sort of credit the people from whose work you're, you're borrowing, right? So from whose research you're kind of learning from, et cetera. Notice the comment. So this is the correction that the, uh, that the humans reviewing this paper made. The credit sh should have gone to, uh, you know, Hortschreiter and Schmidhuber, 1997. So LSTM, that's a long short-term memory by Jürgen Schmidhuber, 1987. So first of all, this is kind of hilarious, but also it's like how that's quite a mistake to make. The first fully autonomous AI research paper that was produced, those that passed the peer review process, kind of a big milestone, fails to credit the guy that is very vocal, very adamant about not being credited for, you know, the work and, and instead other people kind of getting the credit for it, which is something about that is just very ironic and kind of weird. But now you may be wondering, so what exactly did, did this AI actually do? Like did, did some scientists do the work and it just like wrote up the paper? Like what was its involvement in the process? Well, the human researchers, they chose sort of the topic or at least sort of like the industry in which it should be in again, because they're submitting it to a machine learning conference so they can't do some biology study or whatever it had to be machine learning so they, they say they gave the ai scientist just the broad topic to perform research on again it, it had to be relevant to the workshop that it was submitted to at which point the ai scientist version two came up with the scientific hypothesis right so the the question it was asking the thing that it was going to test to see if it's real or not it proposed the actual experiments that it was going to carry out to test the hypothesis. It wrote and refined all the code that it needed to conduct those experiments. It ran the experiments. It analyzed the data from the experiments. It was able to kind of visualize the data in figures. And then it wrote every single word of the entire scientific manuscript from the title of it to the final references, including placing figures and all the formatting and also omitting to credit Jürgen Schmidhuber with his work. Okay, I'm done with that, but it did everything. So then the human researchers picked which paper the or papers they were going to submit. They submitted a total of three. And one of them, this is the one that we're talking about, that one received an average score of 6.33, ranking approximately 45% of all submissions. So again, those scores are higher than many other accepted human written papers at the workshop. It's above the average acceptance threshold. So there was three reviewers, right? One gave us six, one gave us seven, one gave us six. Right, six is marginally above acceptance threshold. So it's kind of, yeah, you're, you passed, buddy, but it was close. Seven is kind of, it's a good paper, no complaints. We accept it. Now, it's important to note here that this sort of workshop, it's probably not as rigorous as submitting it to the sort of the conference itself. And also once the peer review process was passed, the company behind this, the scientists behind this, they, they, they pulled the papers so, because there's a, certainly a lot of sort of ethical questions about how to approach this, you know, completely AI 
AI generated papers and then having, you know, human people sit there review them. How does that change what a scientist is? And while we all may have different opinions about this, you know, this is something that's, it's, it's an ongoing conversation. It's a very new technology that we're all kind of adjusting to. So this was meant to be as an experiment. Will these papers 100% fully autonomous made by AI, can they pass the peer review process, right? At least in theory. So one of them in theory seems like it would have passed. It would have been accepted had they, they continued with it. It could have still been rejected by the sort of the meta review. But as you can see here, it's doing better than a lot of the human scientists that have uh, submitted their papers. Now, by the way, the other papers, so as you can see here, so one received a three, a seven, and a four, the other one a three, a three, a three. So this is the only one that, that would have passed. Although strangely, this one has a very wide range um, of what the reviewers thought of it. So this is kind of a landmark moment and it's the second one for this company. So as they're saying, the original AI scientist, sort of version 1.0, represents the first time keep in mind that was back in august of 2024 not that long ago that was the first time that ai generated entire scientific manuscripts and now to their knowledge to our knowledge this is the first time a fully ai generated paper was good enough to pass a standard scientific peer review process like the one described and of course this is kind of a powerful statement they're saying we as a community need to develop norms regarding ai generated science including when and how to declare that a paper is fully or partially AI generated and at what point in the process this I can already sense is kind of going to be a big deal there are already people on both sides of the issues with very strong opinions you may recall when Sam Altman posted a little sort of a short story that was supposed to be metafiction where an AI kind of describes how it comes up with metafictional short stories I thought that the writing was quite good like surprisingly good tons of people commented on Sam Altman's post and the video that I did about it and some percentage of them said something along the lines of because it was AI generated therefore it's meaningless and a lot of them described in different ways they said that there's no meaning to it that it that there's no weight to it and the person in in the video that I did in the comments said that human written writing has something like some sort of a deeper signals towards that kind of link of the person's experience to the writing I don't know if that's supposed to be like a lit like literally like the words are somehow different or it's more like a figurative expression I, I don't fully understand what people mean by that I, and I try to but you know whether it's AI music or or, or AI art quote-unquote art or AI text we can have our opinions about it right so I might like images generated by AI or music generated by AI somebody might say I don't want to have anything to do with it I'd rather listen to only human generated music right that's an opinion and everybody's of course welcome to have their own preferences etc but it does seem like there's a lot of people that think that the pixels generated like the words generated by a large language models are fundamentally missing something as in if they read something without realizing that it's written by a machine they might say oh this is a good piece of writing and you tell them oh you know or, you know GPT-4 wrote it they're like oh then it's bad right so as if something changes depending on where it originated from as far as I can tell there's some percentage of people that genuinely believe that now I'm not saying whether they're right or wrong I'm not here to just kind of push my opinion I'm saying you know how sometimes if you're asked to play devil's advocate to sort of argue for a position that maybe you don't agree with right that's an interesting thought exercise if there's something that you really passionately feel strongly about can you argue the counter position effectively I try to do that because I think it helps really understand what the other person thinking here I don't think I could do that because I don't fully understand it right as I'm saying here there's going to be difficult questions about whether the science should be judged on its own merits first to avoid bias against it meaning that in the future at some point these AI systems will be capable of producing great contributions to science if those papers are submitted with you know human names human authors on them people might recognize the merit and say this is a great paper let's sort of add it to our you know to humanity's scientific understanding however if it says that a large language model sort of developed this hypothesis and then tested etc it might be dismissed as AI slop 
people might just somehow perceive it as lower quality, not because it's technically wrong or it uh, failed some reasoning or something like that, just simply because of how it originated. So at the workshop, they did notify the reviewers that if they prefer not to review AI papers, they should let let them know so that they're kind of withdrawn from that. I'd be very curious to know, number one, are there people that would kind of strongly object to reviewing something done by a computer versus a human? And it would also be very interesting to know if some of the reviewers, if there's some sort of statistical discrepancies in how they judged papers, maybe because they were kind of on a on the lookout for some AI slop, so to speak, right? Maybe one of the human writers used the word delve uh, one too many times, and maybe a reviewer was like, oh, I'm going to downgrade this because this is obviously written by a large language model. Like, it would be curious to see if things like that happen. I'm not saying they do, but it would be interesting to kind of quantify if there is an anti-AI bias, so to speak. So again, six months ago, this was open source. This was released. AI Scientist 1.0, right? So it comes up with a lot of like ideas for experiments, for hypotheses. It does a novelty check to make sure that it's not replicating some work already being done. And in my experience, a large language models just out of the box are exceptionally good at that. Brainstorming, they're phenomenal. And there's been a number of studies that kind of confirm that they're far better than humans at just rapidly coming up with a lot of good ideas. So if you're thinking about just brainstorming, this is something that they're just exceptional at. Novelty checks, again, with the right sort of uh, database where they can retrieve it and read it, I, I would guess they would be very good at that because it's not a, you know, kind of c control F where you just search, okay, is this word included? They're able to kind of understand the the topics, the semantics to see is this paper similar to this paper, et cetera. Then it goes through and scores the various ideas. It takes the best ones maybe, you know, archives the ones that didn't score quite as high. This, interestingly, the large language models can be kind of poor at. You have to think about out how to structure their approach to how you score papers. In my experience, if you just say, oh, score this on one to 10, it might not do very well at that. However, granularly breaking down, like give it plus one point if it has this, give it plus one point if it has this, kind of like breaking it down like that iteratively tends to work very well. Then it comes up with the experiment template, creates the code, experiment execution script, right? Does the experiments, updates the various plans, then takes the data, does the numerical data, plots, etc., writes up the actual manuscript of what it found, and then eventually submits the LM for paper reviewing, which by the way, that's part of the AI process. It's It also reviews the paper. So part of the, this work is to develop an automated LM powered reviewer capable of evaluating generated papers with near human accuracy. So if you're wondering how they sort of, how they found those particular papers to submit for peer review, probably there was some sort of an automated AI reviewership going on. These were probably some of the better ranked papers. I'm just guessing. I'm not, I don't know if that's true or not, but it would not surprise me. But let me know what you think. Number one, do you think this is a big deal? Do you think this is kind of a big milestone that we just passed? Do you think this is kind of like that first step on our way to potentially an intelligence explosion? Is this kind of like the early sort of prototype of automated AI research agents? And also, do you think there's going to be AI bias against these uh, AI papers that are fully done by AI scientists? Let's say we're able to establish that sort of on average, the AI papers contain the, the exact same amount of mistakes that the human papers do, right? So the quality is on average the same. It's not like they're doing far worse work, just hallucinating a bunch of things. Let's say that they're, they're about the same. Is it rational to have a bias against AI produced science versus human produced science? Is it moral or ethical to have these papers be submitted for them to be accepted into sort of our body of, of work of scientific discovery? Let me know what you think in the comments. For me, I just want to say big congratulations to Sakana AI for their work. So they're building a world-class AI research lab in Tokyo. They're not only doing great work, they're also asking a lot of the right questions. They're doing it right. They're going through the right channels. They're submitting the paperwork. They're informing the people that they're going to be reviewing AI-made papers, right? And uh, as far as I know, this is their first attempt. And on their first attempt, one of the papers manages to, to pass the guidelines to be accepted, which 
which point they withdraw the paper, right, to kind of not muddy the waters, right? So it was just an experiment that they ran. So brilliantly done, well executed, just across the board, very, very exciting. And not to mention, they're open sourcing these projects. They're, as they say, they're democratizing AI. In Japan, that's their goal, but in doing so, it will also be available to the entire world. And I'm sure AI meaningfully contributing to science, to human knowledge, is something that's going to be a benefit to everyone. That's something that everyone will be happy about. Well, maybe not one person. Not Jürgen Schmidhuber. He might not be happy about this. I'm going to post about this. I'm going to tag him in it. I can't wait to hear what his take is. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. My name is Wes Roth, and I'll see you next time.